Okay, now here we are again for the second half of how to draw the horse. And now I'm going to come into my anatomy pass. And so here is where I come in and I begin to work some of the details I didn't do on the first pass and the second pass. The reason is you start working detail too soon before you lock in your landmark points and your proportions, you're going to run into problems. So I always like to have my students go first pass is the armature, second pass, a little bit of the crude form, you know, third pass, we start breaking down more form like these. You got the cheek ridge, the masseter muscle, the sternal mandibularis on the, on the throat, the atlas bone of the, the neck. They have seven cervical vertebrae. Those vertebrae drop in like this. And so you get this lever system of muscles of the cervical serratus pulling, leveraging that neck up. Okay. And some of those muscles are hidden. You're not going to see them on the surface of the animal. They're down below. So we'll be more concerned at this point with some of the more superficial things. Now I'm drawing in the side plane of the nose and, and, the, and the head. So what you're going to find is the part that's not shining towards the sun, you're going to have a little bit of a shadow on there and the inside of the ear. Okay. Let's see. Temple side plane of the nose, cheek, cheek ridge, the top of that cheek ridge faces the sun a little bit, so we'll drop in a little bit of shadow opening up that nostril. Okay, I'm getting over a cold, so excuse me if I don't sound as good as I should. My projection isn't all that well right now. Okay, not worried about rendering. This is not a, a render class. This is more helping you find form. When you understand form and construction, rendering falls right into place. And we'll worry about that later. Now I've got, what's, more, what's very important here is to know where that scapula bone is. That scapula coming forward here meets up with a humerus bone, which is like your upper arm, and that drops back. And that creates this plane change that occurs underneath here in the horse's chest. And you can see it there as we drop away from the sunlight and it makes that curve away, okay? And the forearm has the extensor muscles. And so as we begin to work a little bit of value, we're also chiseling out the anatomy of that form, okay? We've got tendons in the lower part of the leg. All right, there's our leg. And now I'm going to drop the whole thing back, sort of following a little bit of that form around underneath the horse. Because things that are further away, when they're up close, like this horse, they're right up close to us, things that are further away are not going to be as highlighted or as bright as the area of tissue that's closer to us, like this leg. So by dropping it in shadow, we actually push it back under the horse, okay? And now we come over here to the leg that's closer. And I'm going to chisel out that tricep a little bit. Tricep is the muscle on the back of your arm. And these horses have big triceps for their locomotion and pulling of their weight, their forearm. And now I'm at the area where the rib cage actually makes a change of direction. So we put a little shadow there. We drop the belly underneath by curving those lines, picking up maybe a little reflective light from the underside of the belly where the light from the ground hits it and coming up and wrapping around. Okay. Now on the forearm, back of the elbow, excuse my camera, I'm trying to watch through the camera and my drawing at the same time is a little tough. Bringing out that forearm of the extensors, running it through the band of the wrist. Okay. There's an ospisiform bone there, ospisiform bone there, it sticks out in the back. You won't see a whole lot of it from the front, but it's there. Okay, and now we bring, bring that uh, line down lightly. Notice the weight of my lines are different. I don't keep a static, heavy line throughout the drawing. Underside and landmark points generally have a slightly heavier line than on top. If the sun is shining here, then we don't need to draw heavy lines. But on shadow side, it's nice to strengthen. So your line will be variegated. It's going to be 
thick and thin and have this breathable quality to it instead of being deadpan and flat. Okay, Come around here for the haunches now. There's a whole bunch of complex muscles in here. The quadriceps sit on top of the thigh bone, but you won't see those. What happens is you've got uh, the tensor muscle that comes across. Okay, you've got the bicep femoris that actually comes around and sits in front of all that mass. So then you add a layer of fat. You're not going to see those muscles well, but what you may see is this plane change along the side there, you know, where the horse's body flank it changes directions from top sun side to the to the side plane, okay? And so now we can chisel out maybe the patella. See that? Grabbing that patella, bicep femoris. And what emerges between the bicep femoris and, this, and the semi-tendinosis is the gastrocnemius, which is your, your uh, calf muscle. And in front of that, from this angle, we're looking at extensors here on the outside of the leg, okay? So that's what we got going on here. This is called the calcanus, that's the heel. And this little bone here is the outside of that fibula bone, which is the outer part of your ankle bone. Okay, now we're going to come down here, finish out tendons on that lower leg, and that hoof. The hoof is a cylindrical shape, okay? And we got to come under here. Okay, sorry for that. Here we go. Okay. So now we're on the other side of the horse, and the other, other side is the dark side, the shadow side. And push that leg back. Pick up the medial malleolus there. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, then we come down here. Underside of the hoof. You see that? Okay. Now I come back up and underside of the tail has a plane away from the sun. Okay. Now what you don't want to do is scratch. Scratch and hatch these lines in directions that are not going to help you describe the form or the volume or mass of this animal. So what I suggest is you have lines that help scallop out the shape, okay? So we're looking at anatomy now, see? So in, we've done several passes and now we're bringing out the anatomy of the horse. And it doesn't hurt to drop in a little ground plane. The ground plane helps give the animal a little substance, as though he's standing on a true surface and not sort of just floating around in space. And that's a minor detail you can work out. And then we get to the mane. Now, the horse's mane is really a beautiful thing, and you can all make it look really awful if you play with it too much and make it too stringy. So what I'm more concerned about is direction, finding the form. See this roundness of this neck and where it drops in? So the hair has to kind of complement the form of that neck as we bring it down, okay, curving around over the top line of the neck and wrapping around the form. Notice I'm not worried about every hair, I'm more looking at you know, what it suggests on that form. And if he's a wild horse, some of that hair is going to be on one side of his neck, some of it may have fallen on the other side of his neck, or if he just got up in the morning and he hasn't been brushed or groomed by his owner, he's going to have, you know, sort of this kind of very natural cascade to it. So, here you go. You've got your horse now. And we just did a standing model because sometimes starting off with a jumping around pose is a little too much for the beginning. So we'll just start off with this one and see what comes up with some other ones. I'm going to push this back a little bit more. And then I think we're about done. Hope you liked it.